What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have another unboxing video for you guys. I'm really excited for this one because I love unboxing new ingredients and spices and flavoring agents to use in my kitchen. So today's video is being sponsored by Trini Treats. You guys will remember that I did a video recently for them with the Valentine's Day box that they were selling. Now in today's video, we're gonna be going a savory route and they sent me their chief um, like super box. They have a box where they just have chief products all in it and if you want to purchase it from them I'm gonna leave all of their information and stuff like that in the description box down below. Now all you'd have to do is click right below this video and you will see all of their information right there. Their phone number, their Instagram, other kinds of social media and whatever you need to get in contact with them. Now they also have a website trainingtreats.com and if you guys check out their website everything is laid out there for you guys and you can go ahead and pick and choose what you like. Now just giving you guys a little bit of background on who Trini Treats really is. It is a small family business that was started around 2012 and they are located right here in South Florida but they do ship all over the US. Now basically what they wanted to do is give a little bit of a taste of Trinidad or the Caribbean to all of their consumers and their clientele. Now they did this because a lot of these products that they sell, some of them are hard to find in your local American grocery store. So you'd have to go a ways out to go to a Caribbean grocery store, an Indian grocery store, whatever the case may be. But they made it easy for you and just put everything into one. All right, everybody. So everything right here is what came in my chief box. So as you guys can see, there's a lot of different mixes and powders. You have some spice seasonings here. You also have some more spices for like curries especially. And then you have all of your sauces and your condiments here. So I'm basically gonna go over all of these ingredients individually just to share with you guys what you can use them in. And just let you know when you order one of their boxes, you'll always get a little card with their information. So you can get their phone number and their email address, their website, also their Facebook and all of that great stuff. And also guys, just another big shout out Thank you for supporting small businesses. The first set of ingredients that I'm gonna start out with showing you guys is the different powders and the flowers that they send in the package. So the first thing that I see here is the Pilori mix. Everybody knows Pilori is like little fried fritters. And you know what, Pilori's not that hard to make, but I know every once in a while we want a little bit of a cheat. So this Pilori mix would definitely come in handy, especially if you need a quick snack or if you have some last minute guests coming over. Now, I also have some ground chana here as well as some ground split peas or ground dal. For anybody who doesn't know, chana is also known as chickpeas. And I don't usually see the ground chana like in this form. I always see the ground split peas. But this chana right here could be used in the exact same way that the split peas could be used. I see some people making karhi with the um, split peas powder. You could do the same with this. I see people making pilori or bara or any other type of fried snacks or pakoras and things like that with the split peas. You can do all of that with the ground chana as well. And the next set of ingredients, of course, are the different seasoning packets that they sell. Now, I know that Chief is known for these seasoning packets. They have many different kinds. Um, these are just four of the main ones that I know that I see a lot of people using. So the first one is the all-purpose seasoning, and this one right here can be used literally for anything. And then another one I'm seeing here is the fried rice seasoning. A lot of people add that into their fried rice just to give it a nice well-rounded flavor versus having to add in all kinds of separate ingredients. Trust me guys, all of these things definitely come in handy. I don't use them every day in my kitchen because I prefer to like use all kinds of different ingredients that I like in my cooking. But by all means, if you are just starting out in the kitchen, these kinds of things are good for you just so you can get started. And then they also have their Chinese seasoning. I've heard really good things about this, especially when you have to marinate things like chicken, pork, or types of meat that you wanna grill or that you wanna um, just cook up really quick. And then also the chow mein seasoning. Besides Trini people and Caribbean people, I see a lot of Guyanese chefs using the chow mein and the fried rice seasoning. A lot of people have this in their home. And again, the reason being is because it's a quick alternative to having to use a whole bunch of different spices. Now this next set of ingredients I'm really excited for. I think this is what I was looking forward to the most. You guys know that in my kitchen, I definitely have a favorite brand of curry powder. I have a favorite type of masala and I have my own favorite types of spices, right? But I always tell people you have to experiment with different brands. And the reason being is because my taste buds might be a little bit different from yours. So the first thing that I'm seeing here is the garam masala. Now, you know me, I'm very much a traditionalist. I love using my family's homemade masala, but you know what? Just looking at the color through that bag, I can see that it has a really nice color. And then another item here that I see is the duck and goat curry powder. 
Now I've actually used this multiple times in my kitchen before. Um, I like to use regular curry powder. Sometimes I'll add this if I'm making duck curry, go curry, or chicken curry, or any type of meat curry that wants a little more darkness to it. I find that this curry powder is a little more pungent and definitely darker than your normal curry powder. If you do like a side-by-side -side comparison. And then I see some roasted ground jeera. Again, at home, I would usually parch or roast my own cumin seeds, and then I would grind it myself. But things like these on the market make it so much easier. And then of course you have your curry powder. I'll be very honest with you guys, I have never used chief curry powder, but I'm really excited to try it out. I like the color on it, especially if you're making a lighter curry, something like with veggies maybe, this would make a really great addition. And in Trinidad, they call turmeric saffron. And as you guys know, in Guyana, they call turmeric dye. So every country has their own little term for it. This is not the saffron that you'd find in the US that's like really expensive, like those little strands. Um, this is just turmeric here. And I don't discriminate. Whenever I'm using turmeric, I use literally any brand that I can get my hands on because you know what? Across the board, they're pretty much the same. And the last thing here that I'm actually really excited about is this curry stew. Now, in Guyana, they don't really make curry stew. It's Again, it's a cross between a curry and like a brown stew if you're making like a brown stew chicken or something like that. But I know in Trinidad, it's a very prevalent dish. Basically, in here, it has the curry powder. It has all the spices that you could want. A little bit of tomato as well because you know a stew has a little bit of tomato. And it also has the sugar already in it. So what I'm guessing is you probably just put this straight in the oil, let it fry up or chunk a little bit, and then you add your meat right on top. So I'm excited to try this one. I'm sure it'll make for a very easy um, curry slash stew. And if any of you guys are familiar with Chief products, you know that not only do they have amazing spices, amazing seasoning packets and all of these other things, but they also have really great sauces and condiments. Now I have used some of these that you're seeing here. I haven't used some of them and I'm really excited to, but basically what we have here is some lime pepper. I think in Trinidad and Guyana alike, they make lime pepper sauce or lime achar, whatever you want to call it. And basically it's just limes that have been marinated with lots of vinegar and lots of peppers, obviously. And it's a really nice little sourness and it adds a nice little balance to certain dishes, especially when you're eating dal, rice and fried fish. I love dipping this um, with some fried fish. I've never tried this brand before, but I'm really liking the way that it looks. You can see all of the chunks of lime and the pepper, of course. So I'll be showcasing this in a recipe to come. And then you have the chief green seasoning. Again, guys, I make all of these things at home, homemade from scratch. I have recipes for them on my channel already. But if you are somebody who cannot buy a whole bunch of different ingredients to put these things together and you just want it already done for you to save a little bit of time, this is a good brand that is on the market. I have used this before. I've tried it and it is pretty good comparable to the homemade. And then we also have this Chinese sauce. I've never used this before, but it looks like a very dark soy sauce or like a cross between like a hoisin or an oyster sauce or something like that. And then this pepper sauce here, the Birdie's original pepper sauce, is a really nice pepper sauce. We use this in my home every once in a while to put on our food and it is nice and spicy, has a great well-rounded flavor. And it's not like some of those watery pepper sauces on the market, it's actually pretty good. And then this right here, I have heard so many amazing things about this being used in food items. Um, pimento pepper sauce. It's not a hot and spicy pepper sauce. If you guys know what pimento peppers are, they are basically seasoning peppers. So they have the essence of a spicy pepper without the spice. So they add a beautiful flavor to any dish. And the last thing that I'm seeing here is the mango chutney dip. I have never used this before, but I have seen people use it to dip their pilori, put it on their doubles when they're making bara or any other fried snacks. And I've also heard that it is really good. So I will be trying this in another video as well. Now that you guys have seen all of the awesome products that I got in that box just now, we have to put it together into a dish. So recently I have been craving a little bit of pumpkin with some shrimp inside, like fried pumpkin, but I wanna make it like a bunjal style or almost like a curry style pumpkin. So I'm gonna use some of the spices that we got in here, some of those pepper sauces that we got as well, and I'm gonna put it together with my pumpkin and shrimp. So I haven't really shared a recipe like this on my channel. I think I did a pumpkin curry with chicken before. I'll leave that link in the description box down below. And of course I made plain pumpkin curry and regular fried um, pumpkin, but in today's video I wanted to do like a bunjal slash curry pumpkin with some shrimp on the inside. So I think all of these items are gonna work. Now at some point, I will go ahead and post a very step-by-step -step and detailed process of this recipe that I'm making, the bunjal pumpkin and shrimp. But for today's purposes, I'm just gonna go very quickly and show you guys the process. So in a bowl, I have my shrimp that I've washed and I've cut and I've added in a little bit of black pepper and I'm going in with the sauces that I got in my package. I'm going in with the 
pimento sauce. I'm going in with the green seasoning as well as some of this birdie's um, hot pepper sauce. And I just want to let you guys know that in retrospect, this is actually a really nice spicy pepper sauce because it added a nice little kick to the dish. So I'm just going to go ahead and mix this all together. And being that these pepper sauces have vinegar in it and these products have like lime and all these kinds of things, you don't really want to let this marinate for too long because it might cook the shrimp. And I'm also prepping all of my different spices that I'm going to be using. So in this bowl, I went in with the duck and goat curry powder. I went in with a little bit of the ground jeera, some of the masala, as well as some of the saffron powder or the turmeric powder. Now for the cooking process, we're going to start off in a heavy bottom pan and you're going to go in with just a little bit of oil. And what we're going to do is brown our shrimp. I love browning shrimp whenever making dishes like this because I find that it lets it release any of those juices that the shrimp may have and it doesn't make the dish taste um, fishy at all. Sometimes shrimp does have that taste. So this totally takes care of it. So I'm just going to go ahead and stir this up for about only two minutes until the liquids dry up. And then I'm going to remove them from the pan as you see I'm doing here. And once you remove your shrimp from the pan, you're going to see that there's lots of little bits at the bottom and that equals flavor right there. So you want to pick that up with something. That's why we're going to be going in with our sliced onions at this point. And we're just going to stir these around and let them cook for about two to three minutes or until they soften up a bit, get a little brown, and you see all of the items from the bottom of the pan are picked up. I'm also going in with just a little bit more oil just so this way it is not so dry in the pan. And once your onions have sauteed for about two to three minutes, you're also going to go in with some finely chopped garlic and you're going to stir that up a little bit until the garlic starts to get a little bit tender. And after about a minute of that garlic sauteing with the onions, you're going to go in with that spice mixture that we made. And I also added a little bit of water into that spice mixture just to loosen everything up. So this way nothing burnt when I added it into the pan. Now I will be leaving all of my ingredients and the measurements down below so this way you can follow along with all of those as you're putting this dish together. So I'm just going to saute this for about five minutes or until the oil starts to release back from this mixture and everything has cooked down a little more. And once you guys get to the stage here to where it's sticking a little at the bottom and you're seeing all that oil being released, it is time to go in with all of your chopped pumpkin. Now I'm using pumpkin that I had cut and I had frozen a little while ago so that's why it looks like this but all you're really going to do is keep on cooking it on about a medium heat. You can cover it and let it steam for a little bit and then after you let it steam you just want to keep on stirring it and checking it and once you get it to a very mushy and a fine texture or honestly to your liking once the pumpkin is nice and tender it will be done cooking just like you're seeing here. So at this point, we are going to go ahead and add in all of the shrimp that we had browned off earlier. And we're literally going to cook this for maybe about one more minute. And that is absolutely it. And once your pumpkin is cooked to your liking and you've gone in with the shrimp and just stirred it around for a bit, you're going to give it a quick taste so you can adjust any seasonings and it is ready to serve. As you guys can see, I have it steaming right here in a plate and I'm going to be serving it with this soft, fluffy and flaky parata or oil roti. If you guys want to see a really good oil roti video recipe, it'll be on my channel. I'll have it linked in the description box down below. But other than that, you guys saw how quick and saw how simple it was to put a dish like this together using all of the spices and ingredients that I got in this box today. So if you guys enjoyed this video today, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed yet. And once you subscribe to my channel and become part of the Matthews Guidance Cooking family, make sure you're clicking that bell notification icon so this way you're notified anytime I post one of my newest videos. And this way you never miss out on the cooking journey that you are on with me. And of course, leave those amazing comments down below. Let me know if you use any of these products in your kitchen or let me know if you're gonna put in an order for this box. I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed.